And now, from his cell on Pennsylvania's death row, a commentary for Mumia Abu-Jamal. One empire unchanged. Increasingly, the U.S. presidential election looks like a political contest between the same old thing and the same thing with a new face. For both presidents possible have sworn their allegiance to a husky nationalism that imposes military and political hegemony over much of the world. While, of course, differences exist between both major political parties, these differences are more of tone than of substance. Both want to wield the big stick as they launch threats hither and yon, invoking the power of the newest Praetorian Guard, the military, to punish those who won't do penance to their domination. How many people are knowingly voting for relentless imperialism, more war, and slaughters to sate corporate princes? Behind the rhetoric and oratory of each and every candidate is the ceaseless march of businesses, listings that could easily echo the New York Stock Exchange. Instead of democracy, freedom, and peace, the practiced ear hears Lockheed, McDonnell Douglas, and Raytheon. For while families suffer irrevocable losses of sons, daughters, and fathers, and cities suffer from sinking schools, spreading foreclosures, and lessened tax bases, defense industries grow fat on the wealth of war. And the institution of empire is a virtual machine for war, for as we've seen in Iraq, any old excuse will do. With the connivance of the corporate press, any leader abroad can be painted as the necessary demon who needs to be taught a lesson by the forces of democracy. So meaningless is that term that it has come to mean the status quo of hierarchical obedience to those in power instead of the leaders obeying the will of the people. The people are but cannon fodder for the empire machine, and presidents are but managers of those machines, cogs in the wheels of destruction. So, while we dizzy ourselves with high expectations of change, do we not wonder what difference it makes if the manager be black or white? Isn't it more important to stop running the empire machine? Isn't it best if we renounce wars for oil and global domination? Isn't it better if the country doesn't install puppets around the world? If we learn one lesson from history, it's that empires rise and empires fall. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio.